Special thanks to Silent Bob X for his recent Patreon donation. Be sure to check out his Let's Play channel. Link is in the description. Thanks again, man. Well, after taking a year off, I think it's time I brought back the Obscurathon. For those of you new viewers watching this on YouTube, the Obscurathon is when I do a series of reviews where I reach deep into my archive to find some of the weirdest, most bizarre, and potentially most terrible cartoons that the world has forgotten about. We usually have a theme, and this year's theme is superheroes. I got four superhero cartoons lined up, and we're starting off with Defenders of Dinatron City. Defenders of Dinatron City was a six-issue comic series released by Marvel in February of 1992. It was written by Steve Purcell, the creator of Sam and Max. It was also an NES game produced by JVC and Lucasfilm Games in August of 1992. I tried playing it, but honestly, I have no idea what to do. It's one of those kinds of games. And of course, there was a cartoon. It was also released in February of 1992 and created by Deke. Ah yes, Deke Entertainment. I've not really talked much about them. In the 80s and 90s, they produced a ton of cartoons. I have reviewed a few of them, some good and some bad. Problem is, I've covered most of their good stuff already, with a few exceptions I hope to get to at some point. But odds are, whenever I come back to them, it'll most likely be something bad. Most of what they've covered were adaptations of stuff like video games, and they were usually pretty bad. I like to consider them the LJN of cartoons. The cartoon for Defenders of Dinatron City was actually a pilot for a possible series, but it was never picked up. Well, I guess we'll find out why. Let's take a look. The pilot opens in Dinatron City, which is constructed from terrible early CGI. Cooking is safe and easy in a kitchen filled with atomic appliances. And what better way to top off a neutrino nutritious breakfast than with a frosty Proto Cola, everyone's favorite soft drink? Dad's ready for an exciting day at work. Because in Dynatron City, everyone knows that hard work and a good attitude is what builds a great future. An atomic future. So I guess this is the Fallout world if everything just sort of worked out. Why does the engine glow like that, Mommy? <laughs> because it's radioactive! Wow! Feel your skin burning, son? That's how you know it's working. And they even have their own brand of radioactive soft drink. <laughs> hey! Looks like I just got that extra hand I've always needed! <laughs> That's great, dear. Yeah, Dad! Cool! Look, honey, now we're all crimes against God! Let's take a family photo! So it seems Protocola was invented by this guy, Dr. Mayhem, voiced by Charlie Adler. You're lucky I let you live after you dumped the vat of syrup over my factory's atomic generator and mutated it into this useless piece of low-class modular statuary! <coughs> so here's an interesting fact. Originally, this character was voiced by Christopher Walken but for unknown reasons, he was replaced. I think Adler does a good job here, but I'd love to have heard Walken's performance. You're talking to my guy all wrong. It's wrong tone. Do it again. I'll stab you in the face with a soldering iron. So Mayhem is upset because Protocola was supposed to frighten people, but ironically, they ended up liking it. <laughs> this is a problem. You could get rich, but not rich enough. I want to rule Dinatron City. His superpower is being the world's biggest cliché. By the way, he has a talking monkey. Because if you have room in your story for a talking monkey, then why the hell not? So then we meet an electrician voiced by Whoopi Goldberg. Someone in this plant has been using a whole lot of electricity lately, so the company sent me here to find out why. Then we meet some delivery people. The man is voiced by Pat Fraley, the voice of Krang from Ninja Turtles, and the girl is Candy Milo, 
who I swear is reading her lines like a sex phone operator. Oh, Mary. Mary Middlefield? Brett, this is Mary. She works for the electric company. Dr. Mayhem refuses to pay them for the delivery, so they take the only logical course of action. What are you going to do? Well, I'm gonna go in there and kick some butt. Oh, yeah. Good idea. How about it, Mary? We'll help. Stand back. I'll go through this fence like a buzzsaw. Yeah, let's just go in there and kick his ass. There doesn't appear to be any police in this world, so whatever. They find Monkey Kid, yes, that's actually his name, Monkey Kid, and free him. Welcome to the free world, you little monkey kid. Freedom is so... arousing. They discover Mayhem's plan to take over Dinatron City, but he catches them before they can do anything. You won't get away with this, you melon-headed megalomaniac! Truth, justice, and Dinatron City will prevail! That only happens in comic books, fool! This is not a comic book! This is just a lame adaptation of one! Get break free! Ugh, they even chained my toolbox. Why would he do that? Monkey Kid gets free and tries to free the others, but thanks to a poorly placed cliché, he accidentally dumps the protocola all over the others, transforming them into heroes! I'm charged! Just call me Miss Megawatt! Even the dog gets powers. Eat your heart out, Crypto the Super Dog. And Candy gets a superhero look as sexy as her voice. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Oh ho ho ho! No! No, thank you, I'm good. Here's the most hilarious of all the powers. I'll work on my name later! And for reasons I refuse to comprehend, the toolbox becomes sentient. I may be a toolbox, but I know a prison when I see one! And I'm getting out! Well, I guess it's not any weirder than the Protocola actually giving them superhero outfits. So they go off to fight Mayhem. <laughs> now I'll see Dynamics on City! He panic! I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. The city that I created is a city I now rule. Better order a padded seat for your throne, Mayhem. What? Because we're about to turn your rule into drool. I'll also work on my one-liners. What do you want from me? I'm new at this. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting... Uh... Presenting... <laughs> Oh, that's good. Presenting the Defenders of Danatron City. Title drop! And they do a pretty good job of taking out Mayhem's robots. Uh-oh. Looks like this called for... The clamps! After a few Looney Tunes style gags, they send Mayhem running. Darn those defenders of Dynatron City! My robot army is devastated! Cast you defenders of Dynatron City, I'll get you for this, etc., etc. Yay! We win. Oh. Yeah! Mm. yeah! <laughs> that is not symbolic at all. Also, good luck with that, buddy. Hope the Protocola turned your dick into titanium. Curses! My robot smooshed, and all I have left is a useless piece of contemporary art! What's this? An on-off switch, of course. Even evil geniuses sometimes overlook the obvious. You are the worst mad scientist ever! So he activates the Tim Curry head, and yes, it's voiced by Tim Curry. Atom head, the floating head, at your service, Master. 
full inanimate mutagens charged. And our hero's ready for another fight. Uh, guys, uh, excuse me, listen, we're really gonna need a good plan of action here. Ugh, thinking is boring. Plans are for fools! Let's just smash down the factory, blow up everything in sight, and pound Mayhem's head into a shattered bag of skull fragments. Jeez, lady, this is a kid's show! Also, you sounded way too aroused by that thought. But it turns out round two doesn't go so well for our heroes. A little insulation ought to give you some resistance. I'm not even gonna comment on that. Oh, I came, I saw, I conquered. Oh. Okay, she's enjoying this way too much. Well, it turns out running in guns a-blazing wasn't such a good strategy and they all get caught again. Then robot Tim Curryhead turns the factory into a giant war machine. Uh, say there, monkey kid. Well, you said a while back, uh, something about a plan. Yeah, um, never mind. Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen. After Monkey Kid gives a speech on teamwork, they finally get their act together and fight back. They take down the factory Empire Strikes Back style. Monkey Kid shuts down Tim Curry. I can't believe it was just that easy. And Mayhem gets sent packing again. I guess old Dr. Mayhem is all washed up. Oh, this is ripping. We saved Dynatron City. This is amazing! Somebody spank me! Say, let's make the defenders of Dynatron City a permanent team! With a headquarters and cool vehicles and official decoder rings and fan clubs and everything! Now that's my kind of sellout! Wow! Well, at least they're being upfront about it. Well, this wasn't terrible, but aside from its imaginative weirdness, it wasn't too spectacular. It fell short as a funny superhero show, but luckily a few years later, shows like The Tick and Freakazoid got it right. And it was so blatantly self-aware, kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. And by the way, check out the back of the VHS tape. Yeah, that's a great way to get your heroes over. Based on the fact that this was also a comic series and a video game, it's pretty clear they intended this to be a big thing. But sadly, it will remain obscure. Well, that's what happens when some obscure Marvel characters get an adaptation. But next time, why don't we look at a more well-known Marvel character? And see what Hanna-Barbera did to him. This guy is unfucking believable.